Hey guys, Big Red 3! Turn back again. Um, this is just going to be a uh, quick vid on the current sports programs going around because uh, having every sing almost every single vid I want to say something about sports and I forget every time. So I'm just going to do a little non-wrestling. Well, there's going to be a little wrestling at the end when I do my question of the day, which I am bringing back, by the way. Um, okay, let's go to reality TV sports. Oh, no, I can't call it reality TV. Uh, fourth and Long, the show ended yesterday. I really love the show. We've all been watching it. I, I disagree with the winner. For those of you who follow the show, uh, Jesse Holly won. Um, let me just say, uh, he's good. Andrew Hawkins was by far the best. I knew by the second week that guy was the best player in the camp. And Amon Smith was the best defensive back. I do not think he was. I don't even think he was better than Montreal Jones, who was cut a few weeks ago. Um, but yeah, I really think if I, I really think maybe all three should have gone. But if they had to pick one, it should have been Hawkins. I mean, Holly's like six three, and Hawkins is five seven. That's why Hawkins didn't go to the NFL because he's five seven. And I guess they went with the size. Also, it's, also, I guess it had something to do with the game. They played a game at the end. By the way, the game is absolute bullshit. Let me tell you why. <sighs> okay. So the offense, in the offense, you have there were two wide receivers and two D backs left in the competition uh, when they had their game, and uh, they had two they, the offense. They had, it was offense versus defense, and the offensive team, both wide receivers played, and then they put in a bunch of high school football players, you know. So um, the wide receivers and verse and the defense, you had the two D backs, and then you had a bunch of defensive players. That part was okay, you know, if the wide receiver score, their team, etc. What I disagree with was the then after that, it would be the defense on offense, the high school players would play offense, and since the D backs couldn't play offense, they weren't on that team. And the offensive, the wide receivers, their team played defense, and the wide receivers didn't play on that team. And the D backs won! And the two D-backs who were in the competition didn't do anything except Ahmad Smith at the end who uh, stripped the ball from Hawkins and uh, his teammate ran it back and that got the winning touchdown to, uh, to help them win the game. But so then, uh, so obviously the D-backs won and uh, it's, it wasn't fair. And basically what my point is, in that game, Jesse Holly had like two touchdowns, I think like 80-something yards. And Andrew Hawkins had one, and I think that's why they finally chose Holly, just like in The Apprentice, where I already talked about this. Uh, jo Andy Duke was by far better than Joan Rivers, but in the last, the last challenge, Joan Rivers won, so they gave it to Joan Rivers. I guess the last challenge really has some importance. I never thought it did. I really thought it should be the whole season's... I still believe to this day... Like, it's the same thing with... Uh, I don't watch American Idol. I don't watch American Idol, but it's the same thing I heard with uh, Adam Lambert and Chris Allen. How Chris Allen did better on the final contest. Even though Adam Lambert, and I heard at an award show, I forget which one, on Best Recording Artist, Adam Lambert won that award. And that Adam Lambert was the best the entire season. And they based it a lot at the end, and I don't like that. I mean, you want to add suspense. I know you want the last day to be meaningful. But personally, it should be the whole season's achievements. Um, I heard they're going to start a UFL. I heard. I'm not sure if this is true or not. Which is going to be like a little small promotion, kind of like the WWE's version of FCW. There were all the non-signed football talent are going to go there, and then when they're ready, they can go to the NFL. I like that a lot. I like, I like that idea a lot. Um, if it's true, which I don't know. Um, let's see what else. So yeah, so fourth and long, Jesse Holly. I guess he's good. I hope he does well. I hope he makes the team. I hope he. I mean, I hope he makes the final cut because he could still get cut. And also, I think Jesse Holly should have been disqualified because he played for the Bengals. The whole theme of the show was people who never got to make it into the NFL for reasons that weren't their own. Well, it's some people, you know, derailed by women and weed. That's what that's what one guy wrote. Uh, but like one guy, Amon Smith, on the day before the uh, the draft, he had tore his MCL. Eric Jackson, his agent. Uh, uh, try to cut a package deal with him and a few of the guys so the agent can make a lot of money and no one accepted it. And by the time Hawk, it, by the time Eric finally wants to get a new agent, everyone lost interest in him. So all these people were like beyond excuses, whether good or bad. Never got into the NFL. Holly fucking played in the NFL. He was on the Cincinnati Bengals practice squad, but he was cut. I don't care. You made it, and they didn't like you. You should be disqualified from the competition. 
But, well, I guess maybe Holly can get a second chance. I hope Hawkins really gets it one day, and I hope Ahmad Smith can really get it one day because I both thought that I thought both of them were really good. Okay, uh, then the SBs. Okay, I know the SBs is all bullshit. Uh, frankly, I'm not. I don't hate it on it too much. It is kind of. It is kind of what the fans want. I do kind of vote for it. I don't vote for it all the time. I didn't vote this year and I didn't vote last year just because, like, it's so... Like, I think about it like, oh, the ESPYs. A few years ago, I was like, oh, the ESPYs. Well, I'm kind of indifferent. But I still find the show entertaining. It's very funny. Uh, the ESPYs, Justin Timberlake last year was hilarious. And I, and, I, and I gave him a lot of shit. I was telling him, oh, my God, we got Justin Timberlake running the show. What the fuck? Uh, I knew he was a Memphis fan and all that, but I didn't know... I didn't know more about his background, and I should have, because he was really funny. Funny than Samuel Jackson. I thought this year was okay. The Twitter thing was hilarious. Samuel L. Jackson showed his Twitter, like, on the main screen, and he showed Twitters of other people. Like, why is Wade Phillips staring at me? I'm not made of pie. <laughs> that was good. Terrell Owens. I wonder which one's more interested in me, Venus or Serena Williams. <laughs> that was good. Tim Tebow, what would Jesus Twitter? That was really funny. Um... And he did a little a little thing with Peyton Manning I thought it was a little overboard. Like uh, Peyton Manning was in for an ESPN interview and they kept the camera rolling on him when the when the interview guys left the room and it showed him talking like a surgeon to actors, to songwriters, uh, to uh, to uh, nuclear divisions. It was kinda funny. The funniest part was at the end when he goes, Yeah, no problem. But if you tell anybody that I wrote the song Womanizer, I'll never write another song for you again. You got that, Brittany? That was I guess kinda funny. But I was kind of like, you know, some of Samuel's jokes, like the Samuel Hole, he was a former broadcaster. I was like, yeah, it was okay. The best line was, he was in Chicago and he said, damn, where's that Obama kid with my coffee? But everything else, he was, kinda, I mean, I know he's done this three times already, so I guess he's kind of like, you know, flat out of jokes to do. Um, what else in the sports world? I wanted to do something else. Oh, crap. Oh, yeah, my draft. I never got to talk about that. Um, it went very well. Uh... I'm glad with all the teams that are in here. Uh, we had a very good draft. I like my team tremendously. I got D'Angelo Williams with the 15th pick. That's like a gold mine. And uh, I love my team a lot. I, th I personally think that, I'm not trying to be cocky here, but I personally think that myself, uh, Seth, Honor Hammer 26, and Jared probably have the best teams. Uh, Jared has Kurt Warner and Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, that's going to be very hard to beat. Madden Curse! What? Who said that? Um... So yeah, just just like you know, a quick little bit of the sports world, and I want to get back to the question. Blog TV will be coming soon. I don't want to do it today because I kind of want to watch ROH and stuff. I don't know. It's been a long day, you know. My mom just got in. She didn't. She uh she wasn't with us before. She was. She had to stay home for some extra work. So she just got in right now. So now we, you know, now we have another family member in the house. And we have to. Uh, we have to you know spend time with her and stuff. So kind of busy. Don't really feel like doing a one hour blog t blog TV broadcast. Just a you know. It's just seven minute video. The question of the day. What, in your opinion, is the great Kali's best match? I'm curious. I think it might be Kali Cena at Judgment Day. I actually enjoyed their Judgment Day match. I did not enjoy their Extreme Rules match. I guess because they were running all over the fucking place. Um, I actually enjoyed their Judgment Day match more. But I'm, I'm curious. Like I'm trying to think. What the fuck has Kali even had a two-star match? I consider his match with John Cena two and a quarter stars. I can say that with a straight face. I don't remember. It's been a while, but when I saw it, I'm like, okay, this is not this is not good, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. So yeah, in your opinion, what is the best Great Khali match? I'm really curious for the answers here. What is the best Great Khali match? Okay, guys, I'm Big Rat. Three, ten. Oh, guys, peace. Bye.